You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. We'll preserve for our children this, the last best hope of man on earth, or we'll sentence them to take the last step into a thousand years of darkness. You and I have the ability and the dignity and the right to make our own decisions and determine our own destiny. In 1964, Ronald Reagan made a televised address that would become one of the most pivotal speeches of the 20th century. Overnight, a legendary political career was born. But his journey to becoming the great communicator had begun 10 years earlier when the popular actor hit the airwaves as a company ambassador for General Electric. For General Electric, here is Ronald Reagan. Good evening. Tonight it is my pleasure to appear in a repeat performance with John When Harris. Reagan came aboard as the host of the GE Theater, which became the number one Sunday night show, his contract right from the beginning required him to spend a quarter of his time traveling the country. Later you will see an interesting progress report that illustrates another reason why we say at General Electric, progress is our most important product. GE had 250,000 employees. They were in 139 plants over 40 states. He hated to fly, so he traveled by train around the country to the various General Electric plants and talked with the workers. Well, I got a call from the plant manager, and he said, Ronald Reagan is coming to town, and he's going to tour our plant. Would you mind hosting him for the day? I said, absolutely not. And he basically walked along the plant line and talked to the employees. It took quite a while because he just about stopped and spoke with every employee and had a nice little conversation with everyone. He constantly embodied that reassurance, if you will, about being a middle American, whether he was an actor or making a speech somewhere on the General Electric circuit. We felt like he was one of us. Ronald Reagan had a unique ability to relate to anybody, whether they were the janitor or whether they were the plant manager. Uh, I saw that personally. Ronald Reagan was always a good listener, but he learns at GE during these days to pay attention to his audiences. It gave him a chance to learn from the working people throughout the country of what their concerns were, what their hopes were, what their problems were. He was listening to them talk about their concerns about family, faith, community, taxes, government. It also helped him, I think, to understand uh, macroeconomics in a sense, which was very important in developing his vision. He used to say the best welfare check was a paycheck every two weeks. And GE was giving out thousands and thousands of paychecks every two weeks. As Reagan learned what mattered most to GE workers around the country, his ideology began to shift. Think about it. He's on these long train trips, often by himself, looking out the window, composing these speeches. He's sitting there, immersing himself in economic theory, political theory, everything he can get his hands on. If you look at Ronald Reagan's subsequent political career, it's framed during those GE speeches. After his time with GE, Reagan continued to refine his message, becoming one of the nation's most sought-after conservative speakers. In 1964, he was asked to address the nation in support of Republican Barry Goldwater's presidential campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, we take pride in presenting a thoughtful address by Ronald Reagan. Thank you. The speech was revolutionary. Never before had a candidate used television to raise funds or to reach so many voters. Thank you and good evening. The sponsor has been identified, but unlike most television programs, the performer hasn't been provided with a script. As a matter of fact, I have been permitted to choose my own words and discuss my own ideas regarding the choice that we face in the next few weeks. When I first I heard the speech, A Time for Choosing, like most people who heard it, I was very much impressed. It was a speech that was interesting. It was responsive to the needs of the country at that time. Prosperity, the line has been used, we've never had it so good. But I have an uncomfortable feeling that this prosperity isn't something on which we can base our hopes for the future. Even in the speech, he said, I've been giving the speech for 10 years. It was, in effect, the speech he'd been giving at GE uh, and in GE communities. 
No government ever voluntarily reduces itself in size. So government programs once launched never disappear. Actually, a government bureau is the nearest thing to eternal life we'll ever see on this earth. The speech is, it's funny. It is powerful. It is informative. It is dramatic. Where then is the road to peace? Well, it's a simple answer after all. You and I have the courage to say to our enemies, there is a price we will not pay. There is a point beyond which they must not advance. The night of the speech, neither Reagan nor his wife Nancy knew how it would be received. The reaction to it would change both of their lives. The public response was immediate and it was overwhelming. It comes across as principled and substantiated, beautifully artistically rendered. It's a speech for the ages. That was the speech that really was an important turning point in Ronald Reagan's life because it was the cause for people to recognize him as a potential political figure. And anyone who was writing about politics at that moment uh, saw that as the beginning of Ronald Reagan's rise as one of the most successful politicians in American history. With one speech, the stage was set for Ronald Reagan's political career. He served two successful terms as governor of California, but almost inevitably, he set his sights on an even higher office. I went from California back east to become the White House correspondent. So I started dealing with my colleagues in what we call the Eastern political journalistic establishment. And I would say to them in one form or another, he's coming. He's coming to run for president. They would say, Ronald Reagan, he's an actor. He, come on, the guy's a lightweight. He can't. It's California. And when he came, he swept through the country. And I was not surprised. Reagan's achievements as president, both foreign and domestic, are now a part of history. But throughout his time in office, he continued to apply the lessons he had learned years before on GE factory floors. Even his inaugural addresses contained echoes of earlier days. Small dreams. When we were preparing the 1984 speech, he pulled out some old 3 by 5 cards from his speeches uh, during the 50s and the 60s. And so the substance that he gave in that time for choosing speech made its way into the things that he would say as president. In the final analysis, I think people are going to conclude that this is a man who really was destined to be a successful president because he knew how to balance his strong personal ideology with what the country needed. Reagan helped our country find itself, and that's not a small thing. Nearly a hundred years after his birth, Ronald Reagan's legacy remained strong. He discovered America one factory town at a time. Her people gave him voice, and their concerns gave him passion. And from General Electric to the White House, the result was a brighter future for this country. All because of one man's rendezvous with destiny. Until next week, then, good night for General Electric.